Hello, everyone. Welcome to Emerging Brands, Franchises on the Rise. I'm your host, Cash Miller. I'm the CEO of Titan Media Works, and we do podcast production. On this episode, we're going to be talking about painting. Painting is a great opportunity. There are so, I mean, come on, we got a country full of houses and apartments and everything else. So there's always going to be somebody that needs a painting job done. I've got with me Bailey Rayner of Painter Bros. are out in Utah. Bailey, it's great to have you on. Tell us a bit about, you know, yourself, how you got into this and, and the franchise, you know, because painting is a great opportunity and you guys have been expanding. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So a little bit on, on my background. Um, it, it's been kind of a, a unique way that I got connected with Painter Bros. Um, prior to being here, I was doing software development and got connected with them through their proprietary software. Um, I have a background in, uh, I was managing a modeling agency all over the country. And so I have a little bit of that branding, branding um, background. And so when I was approached, I worked with Painter Bros for about six months on software development, um, doing an integration. And um, they saw that I had a little bit of the branding background. And so I did some, you know, branding photo shoots with them. And they approached me about coming in and kind of just taking the, the business to the next level. And uh, my first thought, which is probably most everybody's first thought, is painting. Like, <laughs> It's not it, sexy. <laughs> it's definitely not. And so that was the biggest thing was like, how do we make painting sexy? How do we make it appealing? And so it's not painting, but it's business ownership. And I'm pretty sure making money is pretty sexy to most people. And um, so I sat down with the owner. We we talked about what he was, where he was going, the vision of Painter Bros. What are the next, you know, three to five years look like? Um, obviously, the software. I wanted to know what was happening with the software as it was growing and developing. And I was immediately like, I need to be a part of this. I'm going to lose out on an opportunity if I turn this down, and uh, switched companies and came over here because I. I could see where they were going and I did not want to lose out on that. So it was not anything about painting. That wasn't the appeal. It was where it was going and how it was going to grow. So with that, um, you know, Painter Bros has a very different concept than other painting franchises or even still just kind of the service-based franchises. Um, they did not franchise right away. Um, I know a lot of brands, they kind of come up with an idea and they say, this is great, and just start to build. Um, he actually took about 10, well, about eight years before he started to really franchise. Um, and so what he was doing was most painting companies, most service-based companies are residential. Go yeah. after your residential customers, you stay in your territory, and that's how you grow and build. And, you know, that's, that's kind of what it is. Mm -hmm. um, now with painting, you either need to have a very unique concept or you're kind of just chasing jobs going from one job to the next you can make a lot of money you can definitely make a lot of money in construction yeah. but it's like constantly going to the next project and so he wanted to know or figure out what's the best way to have ongoing you know income residual income multiple revenue streams um, so we don't just do residential. Most of our franchisees will start out doing residential sales just to kind of get the process going and get familiar with it. We do focus a lot more on like commercial, whether it's mm. local commercial, there's government projects out there. And then we have the national accounts. Our national accounts are very unique. Um, a lot of other service-based franchises will have a referral program for national accounts, mm. whereas we will work directly with those customers. So, huh. so yeah. you work directly. So those national accounts can be very large companies that have presences all over the country. Yeah. And they need those painting services. So you work directly with them, which secures the relationship. But then when they have that need elsewhere, you're sending that business to the franchisee. Correct. We have coverage all over the country. So the best way to think about it is we franchised infrastructure. Hmm. We just specialize in painting. So that's the best way to take care of a customer that's nationwide. You have coverage in every single state. Yeah. Um, and so that's what was being built and also executing the, the way that it works the best. Um, what's the best way to make sure that this program is successful? And so for the last, like I said, eight years, that's what's been, been 
been being built. And so we didn't push franchise sales really up until the last two years. Because once we brought on franchisees, it was pretty much like, ready, set, go. Yeah. Here's the opportunity to get after it. Here's, you know, we need to get you trained up as quickly as possible. So a lot of times what happens is, um, you know, they're sitting there building the business and kind of waiting for opportunity to happen. Mm -hmm. And our bottleneck is how fast can we train you? Yeah, that's well, it's obviously a great problem for you to have. <laughs> yeah. But it's also, it, it's an interesting thing because as an opportunity, the fact that you have those national accounts, that's going to be an advantage that a lot of other franchise, you know, painting franchises don't have, let alone independent, you know, businesses that just happen to be, you know, that are, you know, painting companies. Exactly. Um, you know, so you're able to plug them in as part of it. It doesn't mean they're going to get a job right away or anything like that, but you're going to have that, you know, you're part of that larger network. There's a huge opportunity and you, I would assume, are pursuing more of those kinds of accounts. And it gives you an edge as you grow your footprint with more franchisees that because there's not a lot of like large national painting companies. They're all fran what there is are franchises. Yeah. So which if they're still operating like you're a bunch of independent owners, mm -hmm. like I say that's a, some, a serious advantage you've got there. Yeah, no, it really, it really has been because what we're, we're teaching franchisees to do is you have your territory, you have your location, right? You're going to continue to grow mm -hmm. your residential market. That's fast cash, right? That's yeah. money that will constantly come in. But now you're learning how to grow outside of your territory as well. What does, okay, so from the residential and also the local commercial um, market standpoint, what does that look like for the franchisees? Uh, you know, we'll start with kind of the ground up, you know, view, because when a, somebody gets into this business, what does it look like for them? And then what kind of support from a local business standpoint are you able to give the franchisee so that they get, because they're not going to always have a national account job or something to do. They got to get local business. Yep. So what kind of support do you guys provide to get there? Yeah, um, you are correct. I always let my franchisees know, look, you can't be guaranteed national <laughs> accounts. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe you don't want one. And that's okay. It's not for everybody. And um, you still have to be able to grow this business on a local level. Uh, so most of our franchisees, I mean, the goal for year one is about a half a million in revenue. Um, I'm usually doing multi-territory deals. I just don't feel like a single territory does them justice. Um, I mean, you look into your major metros and yeah. by putting in so many franchisees, like, sure, you're selling franchises. That's great. But are they revenueing what they could be revenueing? Are they profiting yeah. what they could be profiting? So our biggest thing is you're bringing people onto your business to have a business so they can retire or just expand their portfolio. And one thing that you could probably do do them a, a better service in is making sure that they actually make money. So I'm always in multi-territory deals. So they have that opportunity for revenue growth. Um, so usually about a half a million year one is the goal building up to that million, million and a half plus after, you know, year two and three. Okay. Um, and so it really just depends on each franchisee. Um, what really, what are their goals? So what I let everybody know is first off, tell me what you need. What do you need to make? What do you need to make to quit your other job, to bring in money monthly? Like, what do you need? And then what do that, you want? I, I got huh. it. Well, I was going to say, I got to mention that. Like, I've talked to a lot of different franchisees. No one has brought that up. What do you need cool. to make? No one asks that. They've never mentioned it on a single show. <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah. No, want. I need to know. Like, what do you need to make? What do you need to live? Yeah. Because <laughs> this is the whole point of the business. Is yeah, it's the most basic money. question. Yeah. <laughs> Make money. And most people, they are looking to step out of a job or replace an income. So what is that? Mm -hmm. So I know how to get you there, right? Like, let's put together a game plan to get you to that point. So that, that's one thing. What do you need? And then what do you want? Right? Because what you want, that's also going to be on that projection. And so um, I would say a lot of people will say like, oh, yeah, I want like 3 million. And I'll say, okay, <laughs> buckle up. Like, I'm going to show you how to do that. And they go, okay, actually, like, I'm, I'm pretty, let's, let's stick it to like one, one, two, one or two million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so part of that is, okay, there's revenue. That's great. That benefits me. I'm happy with revenue, right? 
but franchisees need to be profitable. So that what do you need? That's a mm-hmm. big deal because now we pay attention to all of like their their metrics, right? We track all of their KPI metrics, conversion ratios, revenue coming in, marketing every single week. So we asked me about support. Every single week, our franchisees have training um, all together. And then also every single week, we have one-on-one calls. I mean, they're texting me constantly asking, Mm -hmm. okay, what about this? What about this? Um, And so we're we're always making adjustments. You know, your business is going to shift different seasons, different markets. Right now, we're kind of going into, I don't know if recession is the right word to necessarily say, but it's going down, right? We're going into this down market. So when all you focus on is residential right now, this is a scary time because it's a down market. Yeah. When you can focus on commercial, government, other projects, this is a great time. This has been one of the busiest years, busiest mm-hmm. like Q4s. Holy cow. I actually paused franchise sales for about two months in order to step aside and focus on revenue with my franchisees. Our, yeah. it was like all hands on deck. What can we do to make sure that you guys can execute these projects and see it through? So we we do what it takes for these guys because um, if they're not profitable, they're not going to be around for very long, and my revenue goes away, and that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, right? it's yeah, it's not. <laughs> it, it can't be about just collecting franchise fees. You know, it's royalties and stuff over the long term from the franchisor's point of view. Yeah. But you also to get other franchisees, they need to see. You know, people don't sign up for systems that aren't working. And if they see you going down or franchises closing, then why do they want to be a part of that? So you got to make them successful. It's in everybody's best interest. Yeah. You know, it was really interesting uh, where you just mentioned it's all about franchise fees and revenue or, you know, royalties. Um, So many conferences I went to where I was listening to, you know, consultants and other folks saying it does need to be about the royalties. It needs to be about the royalties. But I can tell you so many people don't focus on that part. They focus yeah. on the fee. And one of our biggest shifts was that's not our that's not our play is selling franchises and collecting fees. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty particular about the franchisees that we bring on. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm looking for people that are either existing business owners, have done business management or project management. You know, they've worked with people. They can understand right. the systems. Um, you know, salespeople are great. And I think some folks are really, really great at this, like when they focus on sales, but most of our business owners, they're not the sales guy. And so my goal isn't to sell a hundred franchises and collect franchise fees. My goal yeah. is to sure sell a hundred franchises, but have a hundred people be successful. Yeah. Well, if, if they're more successful and their sales are going up, your royalties are collected off of that. Right. So it, that's why it's a win-win. So if they're not selling as much as they should be or could be, um, then the royalty isn't going to be there. And that's the ongoing. That's you know, like yes. it's, it's about a win for everybody, not just one side or the other. And I think that's the thing. You know, you need the franchisees to support getting that location open, paying people, and that are going to help train that new owner. But yeah. beyond that, you know, it's about the long-term growth. And I say people want to buy into systems that are working for them. Uh-huh. You know, so you want to see what everybody else is doing. Um, yep. Let's talk. Okay. So if I was a franchise uh, owner, brand new, yeah, okay. what would, for one, what does the training look like? And then what does the initial staffing look like? Because I've seen anything that's in the like home services field. Sometimes you're using subs you're, or you're hiring directly. You know, I've talked to some, especially in like the, uh, I talked to one that was uh, in the garage flooring space that you've you know, coatings and stuff. They're not a painting company, but they're like, Hey, out the gate, we got to have you and we got to have like four people. Cause we're going to get that first job booked and you need four people to actually do it. So yeah. what does it look like from a staffing standpoint too? Yeah. So when you get started, um, essentially from day one, I have a checklist that we go through. And so week by week we're we're making marks on what you need to do to get done, get your business started and going before you even come out for training. So all of your nitty gritty paperwork, licensing, whatever it might be, insurance, all gets done before training. Mm -hmm. Um, Trainings here in Utah, it's three days, two in the classroom, one in the field. Um, I mean, you're you're working with learning from all of our uh, corporate folks, whether it's our national accounts team or our sales team. Um, The software company will come in and do training. Our partners will come and do trainings. Um, You know, we have... um, 
national partnerships with like Sherwin Williams and PPG, they'll come in and teach them. Um, so you get a lot of access to a lot of people and it's a high level overview of really how to run your business. Okay. Um, once you get back home, your brain demotifies a little bit. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of information. Yeah. And um, then you, you get after it, you know, we're going to start turning on marketing and, and get going. Um, and their first 30 estimates, we encourage them to have us, you know, call us up. Hey, this, this is an estimate that I'm doing. How do I do it? Does this look right? You know, kind of help coach them on that. So the software is proprietary software. Um, it's not Painter Bros. Painter Bros is a customer of the software company. Okay. Um, they have all these extra bells and whistles because it's Painter Bros. So why not? Um, but you know, the, the software, it's a desktop and a mobile app. We close about 30% of our jobs on the spot because we can show the customer estimates mm. before we even leave and can walk them through the whole sales process, collecting payments and everything. So it's That's very great. streamlined, um, and it's very easy for our customers. Um, and so anyways, that's part of that initial, uh, training and, and kind of what to expect from our franchisees. Um, I would say there's a lot of hand holding the first year in addition to yeah. you know, the weekly calls and check-ins and whatnot. I mean, you're just, you're constantly on the phone with us and our, our team members, um, just making sure that everything works great and, you know, getting connected with our partners whenever there's questions, mm. um, they have access to those. So then as far as how does the business structure work, um, I would say for the most part, majority of our franchisees tend to be a little bit more of that owner operator in the beginning, okay. just because they want to know how does a system work? Um, what do I need to do? And what's the right person to hire on? Um, and so they, they might go out and do the sales for a little bit. Um, just to fully understand that process. And then they go ahead and hire on an estimator. And that estimator will do the residential, you know, local residential, local commercial estimates, while our franchisees are really just kind of seeing the business through, you know, overseeing it, managing it, and working with the national team on those much larger projects. Okay. Um, so really staffing one person, one salesperson. Hmm. It's all that you need. Get an estimator vehicle for your guys. You know, it's going to be wrapped. Um, and then as far as our painters go, we do subcontract majority of our work out. Okay. Um, and But we're not buying vans and vehicles and sprayers and paint yeah. and all these other things. Like, save your money where you need to. That's not an area that you need to be spending money on. Um, you know, get your guys. Yeah, They still need to be a part of Painter Bros, your subcontractors. We have agreements with that. But uh, your estimator basically sees the job through start to finish, right? Sales to production okay. that person builds that relationship with those folks. Um, you know, build it up big enough, then sure, go ahead and get an office space, get an office admin, you know, get another estimator, get a project manager, especially if you have some larger projects coming in. But those are all things that we do discuss with you as you grow mm. um, to make sure that, yep, mm. this is the right time to go ahead and do it. Yeah, it's important. How do you go about vetting the subcontractors? Do you help them find them? Or, you know, like, what does that look like? Because, you know, they're brand new to the business. So even finding to make sure that they're talented, you know, can do the job right. But you also have the fact that with subcontractors, there's a little bit of control because they can go messing up a job. It's not their name. It's yours. You know, yeah. so what does it look like to hire them? Yeah, um, I would say, so we, I mentioned that we have our national agreements, you know, Sherwin mm -hmm. Williams, PPG, um, you get assigned representatives in your area. And a lot of times they're going to give you a nice list of folks to call. Finding labor isn't necessarily difficult. Finding good labor, kind of like you just mentioned, that can <laughs> yeah. be a little bit tougher. And it is a trust thing. I mean, these guys, they're putting their name on the line too and trying to trust you, making sure that you actually pay them when a job is done. Um, and so, yeah, most of my franchisees, they'll get a list and we do calls together. Um, I get on the calls with them, with their subs. I set up the expectations. I explain, you know, the payment process. Um, how do they get paid? I explain the app and the system because they have to use it as well. Um, and I just kind of run through it and say, okay, how does this sound? Um, I would say of the franchisees that have me assist on those initial calls, their subs do great. You know, they're, yeah. they're the ones showing up and not complaining about things. Um, if they don't have me make those initial calls, I'd say there's a little bit more of a struggle. 
Um, but it's, it's just finding the right way and, and, you know, that will get you started. Yeah. Uh, subs will always call in, ask for more work. Um, and there's just different ways that you can go out and find more contractors. Um, you know, I own a uh, painter bros of Boise. I'm from Boise. So okay. I bought a Boise. I've got a couple of business partners. They're the boots on the ground. Mm. And, um, I tell you like a couple of our subs, they love working with me. and i just i don't know i think some people work really well with subs and some i don't know it's just the relationship doesn't work out the best sometimes um and so that's why i always let you know our franchisees know like your estimator needs to be able to work with these guys and be able to manage them and build that relationship with them Mm -hmm. yeah Do some of the larger franchises end up getting to the point where they hire some of the painters directly because the jobs are so steady or do they just strictly stick to the subs? Yeah, some folks do have um, like hourly workers, especially with some of the the contracts that we do have. Um, At times, it can make sense to have Mm. hourly workers Mm. busy enough. Yeah. Yeah. And then your cogs are even better. Okay. Um, so what kind of investment are we looking from the franchise fees to, you know, getting up and running? Cause I saw on your website, there's a bit of a range. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, you know, what kind of factors can, uh, influence whether you were gonna, you're going to go higher on the range or lower on the range? I'd say it's about a hundred thousand per territory. Okay. Um, and a lot of that is going to, you know, that does include your, uh, franchise fee, marketing, right? Getting just kind of kicking off and going. Mm-hmm. Um, our data first dollar is pretty darn quick. Um, <laughs> most of our franchisees don't even get the chance to officially open before I call them and say, Hey, got a national project for you. You want to go bid it out? And they're like, uh, okay. So <laughs> um, we're like ready, set, go. Uh, which is really great though for them. So it, it does happen, you know, pretty quick with with getting and going. Um, but that's why I mentioned I'll typically do, you know, multi-territory deals on average. Our franchisees are doing two territories. Um, and then eventually they're buying a third one also Hmm. just because they have that revenue opportunity, um, as they expand and they, they start to see the value in securing territories. Yeah. Not having anybody else move in. Right. Yeah. That larger footprint. Mm -hmm. Um, is there a specific number on the franchise fee? And also what's the royalty percentage look like? Um, so franchise fee on a single 65,000, two is 112 and three is 155. Okay. Um, and so the, the other amounts you're, you're operating, I put a little bit of a cushion in there. I know initial investments, typically your first three months, that seems insane to me. So my, my cushion's a little bit bigger also because mm-hmm. we have a lot more larger opportunities that come up pretty quickly. Um, I look at that as like, here's some money to set aside, you know, if you need to float cash or whatever. Gotcha, like, yeah. Um, I like to be prepared. <laughs> I like yeah, my franchise yeah, yeah. to be prepared. But that money is, it's there, you know, for you to operate. Mm-hmm. Whereas you start bringing in, you know, jobs from the very beginning, that revenue is what's paying for your marketing and paying for your right. interest taxes and salaries that's how our you know that's how you want to build Mm -hmm. your business not to be using your investment dollars to pay for your business right that makes sense yep um and then our royalties are five percent okay it's a little lower actually than what's been the standard for most franchises yep um we discussed it and it's not something that we look to increase um we just want to give our franchisees the opportunity to make money um our royalties are also auto drafted so it's smaller amounts. You know, every time a customer makes a payment, there's an auto draft on the royalty. A lot less headache for franchisees. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to worry about writing that check out each month because that's super painful. Yeah, um, when it gets really big, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really and then, month. well, I mean, we're doing, we got some large projects that come through for franchisees, you know, 30, 50, $100,000 projects. Hmm. And yeah. to be able to write out that royalty, like, oof, that's tough. But if it's auto-drafted and you don't even think about it, you know, it's just automatically gone. It's not that big of an issue for them and uh, with us as franchisors. We don't have to worry about that part, right? Yeah. Like, that's why people focus so much on the sale. Got it. Because yeah, it's, it's more... to collect the royalties if you don't have a system in place. Yeah, you're giving up another credit card fee, essentially. Yeah. yeah. 
So that ma- that makes a lot of sense. What do you guys look for in the ideal franchisee for the system? Yeah, I mean, I kind of mentioned earlier, looking for the folks that have you know have experience with managing business or running business or just working with with other people. Um, you know, paint is a product. We, we, we can teach about paint. You don't need to have yeah, experience with construction and, and all of that okay. jazz. Um, I mean, if you have fantastic, I, we've had some great partnerships and I mean, I, I'm very familiar with construction as well. Um, but, uh, really it's, can you follow directions? Can you, yeah. Can you follow, can you the, follow system the system? That... Yeah. Right. Um, have you ever implemented systems? Like, are you the type of person that's going to just try and do it all on your own, which everybody does. I always let people know 100% of franchisees, you're going to come in, you're going to follow the system for a minute. You're going to think that you know better. You're going to go <laughs> off the rails. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to watch you. Um, okay. All right. What did you learn? You know, because that's all really yeah. that you're going to learn and grow is by screwing up. And so everybody does. Everybody will. Uh, I did, you know, with my franchise, too. And it's like, oh, how's how's Boise doing? Oh, Boise could be better, but we're learning. Yeah. Um, and so that's a, that's OK. So everybody is going to screw up. But I give them a heads up that they're going to screw up. Yeah. Have you ever watched the movie yeah. The Founder? Yeah, I started watching it, and I don't remember what happened. I may have fallen asleep well, or got busy, so th- but it was cool. <laughs> well, they, well, there's this great scene. So you talk about them going off the rails, and there's this great scene early on in McDonald's you know, when Ray Kroc, the uh, the guy who didn't really found McDonald's, but he built the franchise system. Yeah. He, he had sold some fran- the initial franchises to some buddies, and they build out the stores and everything. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he shows up, and they're selling everything you can think of. It's not just burgers. They're selling chicken. They're selling, like, you name it. And, yeah. he, goes there, and he goes back to him, and he says, you can't do that. Like, that yeah. is not what we do. If right. and one of them say, right. one of the guys says, "Well, people love chicken." He says, "Well, then they can go to a chicken joint." <laughs> We're right. not a chicken yeah. joint. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I would say that a lot of a lot of folks, um, they yeah, they'll 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 do, they'll do something where I go, I don't understand what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> but you just you gotta let them, and it has to be enough time. That goes by, um, but you're never gonna let them fall. Right. Right. No, that's good. Um, yeah. Enough time to kind of figure out that yeah, this is probably not the right idea, but not enough that it's a disaster and ruins their business. It's you know yeah. just for them to understand that hey, this is why it's a system. This is why you bought into it because exactly. we have these years of proven experience and all these other franchisees that are following it and it works. So stick yeah. to it. Yep, exactly. Um, I mean, we're doing end of year closeouts right now, you know, this week with everybody and going through the numbers and, you know, some of them I'm like, I don't, what? Like, that's interesting. Um, (laughs) But a lot of it is, okay, what'd you learn? Yeah. What are we going to do next year? What's your goals? How do you feel about that? You know, what? Because I can't do this for them, right? Like I, Mm -hmm. I can want it, but I can't do it for them. Eventually, it's still their business. The whole point is that they bought a system to follow. They bought an yeah. opportunity, but they still have to implement it on their own. And so um, I'd say that's the other thing is just finding the right people with the right mindsets that aren't just going to buy a business because it sounded fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a large yeah. investment. You know, a lot of times it's, you know, people's entire you know life savings in that investment. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so, take that lightly. That's a lot of like you've been saving it for a very long time. That's that's a big right. deal to me. And um, yeah, yeah, let's make sure that you get that money back. Well, the so. franchisor's role is to make the franchisee successful. I like the fact that you guys are taking, you know, at least it sounds like you're taking seriously the coaching aspect to make them successful business owners and not just say, Hey, here's the system, follow it. It's yeah, now here, the, the, let's go through it again. You know, the, the, do these things and you, you know, you got off track because you went and did these things and you know, you yeah. shouldn't be doing them, you know, cause this is, that's why it's a system. Well, but I think that's where a lot of um, franchises, they often don't take seriously enough the, uh, the coaching aspect that's involved, which can be one-on-one. It's not just, Hey, yeah. show up for our training program. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, just chatting with franchisees, um, 
uh, a lot of it is like, you know, why, why us? Like, why'd you come with us? And uh, I love our, I love our people. They're very much like, well, when we look at you guys, we go, huh. <laughs> I get it. I know. Um, I mean, you, you kind of mentioned earlier, like painting. Like, I know. I don't. I, I'm not painting though, right? I just own the painting. Right. Business. So, um, but it is very much like I think they can tell that we care. Um, we're not so big where you know there's just you know a hundred corporate people. Because yeah. at this point, now you're just a number as a franchisee. You call in and you're talking to somebody. And each time you call in, you're talking to somebody else. And I think we very much do like the intimate aspect of, okay, like you do you get to work with me. You get to work with this team member. You get to work with this person. And we also know like some folks, you know, take really well to different people. And so we're not always going to force them to work with the same person over and over again, personalities. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to make sure that you mesh. But they're not just a number to us. They are their person. They have families. Yep. They have goals. Like that, it means something to us. And um, I think even as we grow, that's something that we will stick to our values on. Yep, that is a perfect note to end this episode on. Bailey, how would people? Because you've got a really good opportunity. You know, painting is not. You know, like. Sometimes the best business opportunities are honestly the most boring, you know, painting, yeah. you know, you know, the old, you know, saying of, you know, it's like watching, you know, paint dry, you know, cause it's always so slow. But yep. the thing is, is some of the best business opportunities are some of the, I won't say boring, simplest, you know, where you're mm-hmm. painting and yeah. that's what this is. It's a, a really great business opportunity and you guys are providing not just the systems, but you actually care providing coaching that's a difference between some of you know earlier franchises but you guys have got what around 20 locations or so i think you know Mm -hmm. somewhere in that neighborhood yeah Uh, i just uh closed two more uh yesterday and today there you go congratulations (laughs) the system is growing how would people you know that also want to join that system get a hold of you um yeah so they're gonna reach out to me um Email is that probably yep. okay? So e- email, uh, website, LinkedIn. You yeah, know. so you can go to um, painterbros.com slash franchising. Fill out a form there. It'll go to me. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can call me. Uh, you can email me. So it's just brainer at painterbros.com. You know, I'm pretty easy to find. If you Google me, I'll, I'm there. Okay. Well, it's been great having you on. Bailey, if you're looking for a franchise that is a stable opportunity, painting is a great way to go. Um, There's not a ton of national competition unless it's other franchises. You're competing a lot of times with independents. And, you know, you buy into a franchise because it's a system. Painter Bros has a proven system that works, and it's a wonderful opportunity. So definitely, if you're interested, give them a shout out. Um, my name's Cash Miller. I'm the host of Emerging Brands Franchises on the Rise. I'm also the CEO of Titan Media Works. We do podcast production. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you on the next episode.